Hello Electroheads, it's Ailish here and today I'm going to be talking about the pros and cons of Tesla's marketing department, or in fact, lack thereof. Now, it's no surprise that Elon and his gang have boasted a zero dollar budget for traditional marketing, instead funneling their funds into R&D to uphold their future-facing EV empire that continues to roll out products of exceptional quality. And that's clearly been a solid plan, with Tesla absolutely dominating the EV space with nothing more than peer-to-peer -peer marketing and, of course, Elon's Twitter presence. And in turn, that's created a market valuation that makes some of their competitors look like humble small businesses in comparison. <laughs> in fact, whilst we're on the business evaluation, just recently, Tesla went through the $650 billion valuation mark. Not that long ago, in about a space of 20 minutes, Tesla's market cap went up by over $30 billion. That's about the size of Ford. Yeah, Ford, in 20 minutes. What goes up must come down, and there are plenty of analysts that believe that Tesla is no different to a Bitcoin-esque hype beast. Fact coming up for you here. Did you know that automotive is the second biggest advertising industry in the world? Advertising is a tried and tested way of selling cars. And of course, Tesla's competitors have decades of experience in creating marketing campaigns. Should Tesla be doing the same, or are the other big dogs just wasting their money, just burning that cash? In early October of 2020, it was widely reported that Tesla had fired its PR department. You're fired. Allegedly confirmed by a source at the highest levels of Tesla, and I quote, We no longer have a PR team. That was me trying to do a Tesla exec. It was a bold move. I mean, clearly Tesla aren't looking for ways to cut costs or save money because they're doing all right for themselves. This seemed to be a legitimate tactical move by the company. This is exactly the last thing they'll expect us to do this time. Declared as an industry first, Tesla once again threw out a curveball and completely rewrote the business strategy game because that's what Tesla does. They're disruptive at every level especially their CEO, Mr. Elon Musk, who, of course, has gotten himself into all kinds of trouble on Twitter. Have her actually true. Me. Sees dopamine. My brain. Releases dopamine. But whilst Musk says that they don't do PR or marketing, that is just not true. You lie! In fact, they do anti-marketing marketing. So, for example, that Cybertruck launch when that guy threw a metal ball through the bulletproof glass that shattered. Of course, just an accident. The consequential internet being set on fire with mass global media coverage and reportage. Of course, just an accident. Crucially, Tesla has turned their customers into its marketers. The multi-billion dollar company relies on the Tesla fandom to spread the message and propel the hype of the product, essentially using peer-to-peer -peer advertising to do the job. Now, you can't blame them, the Tesla fandom is strong, as we have experienced ourselves in the comment section. Are you okay? <laughs> no! No! <laughs> and this is where you get to the heart of the matter, because Tesla in some ways isn't just a modern company. It's a bit more like a cult. Strong, charismatic, unique leader. Check. Controversial stories from people who used to be on the inside who are no longer involved. Check. A following that is, well, pretty full on. Some would say utterly, blindingly devoted. Check. Of course, that can create a huge impact, but is it a sustainable model in reaching new customers? Because when you really look at it, in some respects, this could be quite limiting. Now, in a recent video, I talked about why the VW ID4 was set to be the most important electric car of the decade. And you can check that out after this by clicking the link above. One key point I was making was, despite how awesome Tesla is, they just don't resonate with your average buyer. So their media market is 54 year old men. And if that is the main bulk of customers preaching the joys of their models, well, how do they expect to reach all those other demographics that they haven't yet tapped into? As we all know, social media creates echo chambers which fragments the online community and boxes us into like-minded groups. Why? Well, because these platforms are designed to profit from humans' confirmation bias. So with that in mind, how do they expect to spread the word and reach the masses from word of mouth when actually it's just being passed down a really restricted chain from peer to peer? If you're in the echo chamber, my God, it's loud. But if you're not, and most people aren't, well, that key strategy of theirs, it's gonna be nothing more than a whisper. 
From experience, I've never had anything Tesla related pop up on my feed, and neither of my friends, male or female. However, I've had car ads from competing companies creep in. In fact, every time I open up YouTube these days, I see an ad inviting me to test drive the Mustang Mach-E. Hello. Now, car companies run these ads because the unit economics work. The ad spend yields a profit. Tesla's focus on R&D spend is admirable, but if people only wanted to buy electric cars that were at the cutting edge of R&D, well, the Nissan Qashqai wouldn't be one of the most popular cars on the planet. Sadly, it is. 2020 was a great year for EV sales across the globe, and Tesla's sales have grown year on year. But that's not the whole picture. Tesla did well for themselves through 2020 despite COVID because of their online sales strategy. Because unlike other car companies that sell through dealerships, if you want to buy a Tesla, you just go online and click to make your purchase. However, October came around and the VW ID3 was released and swept away both Tesla and Renault to become the best selling electric car in Europe. And to add to injury, Tesla dropped out of Europe's EV top 10 entirely for the whole month. But why did the ID3 do so well, especially when VW have been carrying the chip? No, sorry. Huge crevice on their shoulder. That is, of course, the emission scandal of 2015 aka Dieselgate, which is a really hard one to come back from. Well, VW purged the bad apples and gave their brand a complete overhaul. Jochen Sengpil, the CMO of Volkswagen, said that he wanted VW's presentation to become more human, more lively, to adopt the customer's perspective to a greater extent, and to tell authentic stories. Now, this is marketing jargon for VW wants to connect to their audience on an emotional level. Now they know that Tesla has won the battle for the minds of the tech bros and the first movers, but VW thinks it can win the battle for the hearts of the everyday people. And according to the sales reports, the work to get the VW brand back to where it was in terms of consumer perception seems to be working. People are buying into VW, and yet the price between the Tesla Model 3 and the VW ID3 isn't that huge. VW have won the hearts and minds of a global audience before, and despite recent issues which were, of course, unbelievably damaging, when you have a deep emotional connection with your audience, the evidence suggests that gives brands the chance to rebuild much quicker than you might have thought. So maybe Tesla needs to have a rethink. Relying on the fans to spread the word is a bold move, and it undoubtedly pays dividends, especially if you're in the Tesla stock club. But is it a wise one for future growth as electric cars become every day rather than early adopter? There's no denying that Elon formed the EV culture we see today. But if he's not careful, then competition could dominate the market much more than it has been already. Maybe that's why we saw Elon and the CEO of VW together in public not that long ago. At Battery Day last year, one Tesla investor put forward a motion to the board to consider diverting budget to marketing. Now, I say this because I fully respect Tesla. I think that they should have taken it on board. The lack of a PR department and the sole reliance on peer-to-peer -peer marketing means that there will be a decrease in accurate information being circulated about Tesla. And like I said previously, there's gonna be a limit on who they can reach. The EV world needs Tesla to continue to dominate because it sets such a high bar for the competition. And lastly, we're all suckers for car ads. I mean, who doesn't love watching the crazy, mad, beautiful concepts that car companies come up with to sell their product? I think Tesla should have a go at it. I mean, I'd love to see what they come up with. I'm sure it would be industry leading. So there you have it, a hot topic for discussion there. Whew. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Tesla's marketing strategy. Do you think that there's more that could be done to push them even further? Or do you think that other car companies really could give Tesla a run for their money? Let me know below in the comments section, like and subscribe, and I will see you all very soon.